This is project 1B for access in the Go Office 2010 textbook. We're on page 473, objective number 6, and activity 1.18 says to um, start access, which I've already done, and then go to available templates. is this group right here and click on sample templates and this is what we get mine looks a little bit different from the book uh, probably just because of the different resolution of the monitor and the one we want is events And then what we want to do is browse for a location to put this. And we're going to put this on SkyDrive, OneDrive. And it's going to go in Access Chapter 1. And the name of this is going to be uh, Last Name, First Name, and I'm going to call this 1B Student Workshops. I'm on the top of page 474 right now. And click on OK. And then click on Create. And a template in Access, just like in Word or Excel is basically a database that's got some things set up for us already. And uh, let me see, we're on uh, Activity 1.19 now on page 474. And um, looks like I've got a little display problem here, but we'll see how it works. Um, we have a blank table here, and uh, it assumes that the following things uh, are things you need to keep track of for events, uh, a title, a start time, an end time, a description, and a location. And we're going to put in some data. And I'm going to type in the data that's on uh, page 474. Okay, so I've typed in the first record. And now it's telling me to click on new event up here on my little menu and here's another way of entering the data and I'll fill out this with the data that's on page 475 okay I've typed in the data for the second record and we can click on close here and it appears on a new row by itself and um, we have a couple more records to enter here at the bottom of page 75 and I'll pause the video and type those in as well so now I've added four records and I'm now on the top of page 476 and we want to go to the upper right hand corner of the window and close the form and we're going to bring in some more data so we don't have to type it all ourselves so we want to go to external data and we are going to uh, go to the import and link group and we're going to pull something in from an Excel spreadsheet which is a common place to get data for a database and um, we want to browse and find the A01B workshop. So let's go and browse. And it's in OneDrive. Uh, and there it is. I'm going to open that up. And what we want to do is we want to um, append that to the records that are already there and then click on OK and it gives us a chance to view the data and then click on Next and we're going to tack that onto the Events table and then we're going to click on Finish and we don't need to save the steps so we're going to click on Close and now we want to view the navigation pane over here
and we want to double click the event list here and um, here are the four records that we've entered and it looks like we brought in eight more records and they have us keep closing this all the time usually I leave it open but uh, we'll close it so it looks like the screen in the book and uh, we've got a select all button here. I don't know if you can see the triangle, but there's a faint triangle right here, just like there is in Excel. And if you click there, it'll select everything. And now we've got all the rows selected. Uh, we're going to change the column widths, and this works pretty much the way it does in Excel. Uh, we're going to right click on any column here, and yeah, that did not work. Let's try that again. Let's try it this way. Let's do a double headed arrow and uh, that works exactly the same way that it does in Excel. And uh, now everything is just as wide as it needs to be to accommodate uh, everything that's in the column and um, it says in the first record click the title field to deselect all the columns and save the form and we'll click on the save box up here and it should look like it does on the top of page 477 now and uh, now we're on objective 7 activity 1.20 um, and we want to reopen the navigation pane and we want to click on the arrow here and we want to see our tables and related views and now uh, we can see a few things that were not available before and this is a table uh, this little icon here is for a query this is the icon for forms and this is the icon for a report and we want to take the events table here and we want to uh, right click on it and we want to choose open and this is what we get and then it wants us to switch we've got two things open here now one for each tab it wants us to switch to the event list tab which is this um, form over here and this is the table and they don't look all that much different and then we want to find current events we want to right click on it and we want to open it we could also have double clicked on it and this is a report that uh, takes the items that are in the table and uh, displays them in a nicely formatted form uh, okay we want to close the current events report and from the navigation pane open the events by week report so let's open that and this is what we get with a big heading at the beginning of every week and um, we want to close this one and close the remaining two objects which are the table and the form and close the navigation pane and now we're on page 479 we're going to create a new table in a database that was created with a template and uh, on the ribbon click on the create tab and in the tables group we want to create a table and Um, we want, uh, uh, we want to do a type here for this, uh, okay, let's try this again, okay, um, because I had started to put something in there, it didn't like that, I just had to hit escape to get out, now I click on the down arrow, and uh, we're going to have a text uh, field 
and we're going to call this uh, campus slash location and in the third column we want text again and this one is going to be uh, room and the next one is going to be seats and the next one is going to be room arrangement and the last one is going to be text again and equipment and then press the down arrow so we have a table that has six fields or six columns and uh, we want to go over here we want to uh, rename the ID field and we're going to call this room ID instead and press enter and now let's go to the fields tab up here which is already selected and in the formatting group click the data type arrow and we want to change that from a number field which is the default an auto number field and we want to make it text and um, in the field validation group uh, unique is checked and um, this is going to be a key field which is supposed to uniquely identify a row and um, a key must be unique you can't have the same key appear more than once in a given table okay now we're going to type in some data here again and I'll pause the video while I type that in okay so I've typed all the data in now and uh, we want to save this so let's go to our save button here and the name we're supposed to choose for this is given on number six on page 480 so it's last name first name and one uh, B workshop locations and click on OK or hit enter and now we've got uh, the data that's uh, supposed to be typed in on number nine and then to the left of the room ID field we want to select all of the rows and um, on the home tab in the records group click the more button and um, go to field width and choose best fit and that'll uh, make them all just as big as they need to be. I still think the easiest way to do this is just select everything and then go here and get your uh, uh, two-headed arrow. Let's try that again. Get your two-headed arrow and just double click and it'll make everything as wide as it needs to be. Uh, and the nice thing about that is uh, you already know how to do that from Excel so you don't have to learn anything new for that. Uh, and now we're on number 10 and we want to close this uh, so we will save it and then we will close it and then we want to reopen the navigation pane we want to find the name of our new table and we want to make the navigation pane a little wider I guess and now it should look like it does on the top of page 481 and now we're going to print a report in a table um, on number 1.22 from the navigation pane open the event details report reports have a little green folder or booklet here uh, so we want um, event details that would be this one and there's our report and then we want to close it and we want to open the all events report so let's double click on this and uh, in the lower right hand corner click the layout view button which is this one here we've got some choices down here just like we do in um, Excel uh, we've also got uh, some choices up here as well and we want the layout this is the one I usually go to so we want the layout view and um, we want to go to the top of the report 
click on the text all events here to select it and then we want to click to the left of the A here so now we can insert some text in here and we're going to uh, add our name and then we're going to save the report and we want to go to um, print preview so I'll go to file and then click on print and click on print preview and see what it's going to look like and uh, now we've got our name added up here at the top and uh, we don't have any navigation arrows down here which means that our document is only going to be one page long and um, we're not going to create a paper report here we're just going to close the print preview and and then it says close the report it appears that the report is already closed and now we're on page 481, bottom of page 41, actually flipping over to page 42. And um, we want the 1B workshop locations table. And um, it says close the navigation pane and display backstage view, which basically means click on file here and click on print and click on print preview and this is going to be two pages and probably what we would like to do here is switch this to landscape and now it's one page my arrows are dimmed out meaning that uh, it's only a one page report and again we're going to create anything for, not going to print anything from this so uh, we're just going to close it close this and that is the end of the project. We can just go to our file tab here and we can click on uh, close the database. And that's the end of project 1B.